Hi, intro students. I'm I'm gonna use an artwork today as a, a vehicle for helping us get to this idea that's come up over the years in my classes where um, there's this kind of question when looking at, um, I think, challenging artworks, but especially more contemporary work, where students want to know how, how I got to where I, I understand an artwork, but the, what, what's the entry? What are the entry points for understanding something that um, seems, seems as though it doesn't have much to say? Um, and it, it's it's kind of like an exercise in how I how I how I got all these ideas um, and and what it from what am I deriving those ideas or from where is it from the work is it from investing in the work and investing in what the the work might be referencing and and so on so we're going to use this artwork uh, this is a um, piece called Untitled, uh, in parentheses, uh, Portrait of Ross in LA, and I think this is from 1991, yeah. So the artist here is uh, Felix Gonzalez Torres, and he's born in Cuba, um, and didn't, didn't live very long, he's 1957 to 1996. Um, and I chose this one not only because he, he's an artist that I think is, um, very uh, pivotal uh, in the last 20-30 years um, has had a significant influence on artists uh, that I know and that I study and what's challenging about it a lot of his work is that it, it enters into this realm that when we were bringing up isms there's um, there's a, a point where isms start to kind of fade out in a way, and it becomes uh, complicated by this idea of postmodernity and whether or not we can move beyond uh, some of the theories brought forth by postmodernity, and we'll we'll hash out all that um, as we move along. But he does this really interesting thing where he makes artworks that most often insist on the spectator becoming part of the work. And so when you come to an artwork like this, this is an artwork owned uh, by the Art Institute of Chicago um, and presented um, often at their modern wing. When you walk in, you see uh, what this looks like is a, a pile of candy. And it, it looks often like this too, and and I use this image because you can find a lot of these online. But it's it's just a a person coming in and grabbing a piece of the candy out of this pile. And the, the candy they're individually wrapped. There's no brand on the cellophane wrappings, um, but it's it's candy, and you can eat it. And what? What's really interesting about it is that you you don't really the work doesn't really complete itself until you take the candy. Okay. Now there's a lot of complex factors to this artwork that help us understand what it means, but he gives us a clue. So when we come back here, he gives us a clue. This is called Portrait of Ross in LA and it's untitled and one of the things that you'll notice if you look through this is what is online this is a didactic but you would find this on the wall too there'd be a little um, card didactic card on the wall with the title uh, who maybe owns it or is loaning it to the museum um, if the museum doesn't own it outright and then the um, maybe some directions on, uh, and I, I've seen this at the Art Institute of Chicago where there's a little card that says, please only take one. And then sometimes, um, 
when I've seen it there, there's a dossier or a guard who is standing there um, attending to the artwork and um, inviting uh, patrons or, or um, viewers, spectators to come and take the artwork because it's not, it's not necessarily readily available from just looking at it that you're allowed to <laughs> touch the artwork. Not only touch it, but you're allowed to eat it. Um, so, of course, those are really unique things, right? And, and unique in terms of um, how we more traditionally think of and come to artworks. And so, uh, the portrait of Ross, though, one of the things you would see on this placard is that it says that the artwork's dimensions vary with installation, but the ideal weight of the artwork is 175 pounds. Now, when you think of a portrait of Ross, you might think of um, a person, right? A portrait is often of a person. Um, 175 pounds is a, a pretty um, believable weight for a grown adult male. Um, and, and so if you lend to looking at those elements and those clues and start to see this as a portrait and not only a portrait but a portrait of um, Ross in Los Angeles so a, a, um, an actual person and the, the, the invitation to then eat the candy that is a, a representation of Ross um, you start to start to put some pieces together, but I would say that it's really hard without having a, a kind of overall investment in uh, the art world or or a discourse around work like his or his work specifically. There are just things you would have to look into, and you'd have to. Um, acquire the knowledge in order to maybe um, fully put the work together um, and to fully or m I would say maybe more deeply understand uh, what Felix Gonzalez Torres is doing with this work and and the things that become exciting if you if you choose to do that are um, a knowledge of the the time period, so you can think of context, 1991. If you know about Torres and you know that he uh, passed from HIV AIDS, you might derive that Ross did as well. And if you did look into his work, you would know that that portrait of Ross and Ross is his um, lover who did die of HIV AIDS. Um, and, and when those things start to come together, you start to see maybe the symbolism, the, the um, poetry, uh, maybe, um, maybe the kind of socio-political aspects of what it means to invite a viewer to eat this portrait of Ross. Right? Not just you, but a collective of viewers. And so uh, some things that I, I like to then talk about in this conversation often with students is just the stuff that I know. And it's, it's stuff that I've looked into and I've learned and, and gotten excited about and found a lot of... Um, kind of am amazing insights to the subjects that Torres is talking about because of that that investment. Um, so some things to know. Um, the artwork is purchased by a collector or a museum or institution. It's required that when it's viewed, that it's maintained. So that ideal weight, 175 pounds, is that what it said? Yeah, 175 pounds. Um, it needs to be replenished every day. 
So when you go and you see it depleted the next day, you should come back and see it replenished to that ideal weight. Um, that means that there is someone manufacturing these candies beyond the passing of Torres. Uh, it means that um, there's somebody in charge of maintaining the artwork throughout the exhibition throughout its um, presentation, so that could be months. Um, and you start to think about um, maybe maintenance in relationship to um, the AIDS epi epidemic and the kind of collective participation in Ross, the kind of taking, the eating, so this kind of um, life force, this connection between us, but also a, a, this kind of responsibility of these institutions to um, care for, to replenish, to revive um, this portrait of Ross, and thinking about how that broke down in the AIDS epidemic and how that, that was really problematic. And so um, there's this, just a host of really interesting things that start to come up. And I think it's worth um, pondering some of that stuff um, if, if you're intrigued or even, um, like we've talked about, initially turned off by something like this. Um, another thing that I've learned that often the, the security guards who are there to invite you to take some of the candy are often um, minorities who are paid hourly in these institutions like museums where during the day they're at a job and um, the patrons or people who are coming there to view the artwork are often um, in a in a leisure position, often more privileged. And so to have someone who is in an hourly wage job, potentially most likely less um, educated, um, telling someone who is more privileged in that situation how to interpret or to interact with the artwork is a power dynamic. It's a flip, right, on that power dynamic. So he's really interesting in these relational aspects of how the artwork is dealt with, who's um, an authority over the artwork. And you see that throughout his work consistently. So um, Felix... Gonzalez Torres. If you look at more of his work, you'll see things like light bulbs hanging from strings like this. And if you see them in the museum, you're confronted often with seeing something that looks extremely simplistic, but ultimately, if you're willing to pay attention to how simplistic it looks, you, you might think, wow, all those light bulbs are on, and there doesn't seem to be any out, <laughs> and who's maintaining that? Who's changing those light bulbs? <laughs> and then you start to see this kind of curtain maybe pulled back on the institution where you're like, oh, there are people who are in charge of maintaining this thing. Um, this source of power um, needs to be handled by by people who agree to maintain it. So um, he, he does this throughout um, his work. He often has participatory works where, let's see if we can find these kind of stacks of posters where people in the museum can, you can take these, right, take them one by one. Um, and again, they deplete, and they're, me they're meant to be replenished, okay? So uh, we'll use this as a, this kind of artwork and uh, a couple more like it to 
uh, as catalysts for some of um, our thinking. Um, I'll end with this. This is just one of my favorite works. It's called um, Untitled Perfect Lovers. Here, I think this actually has the title. Let's see if it'll open for us. There we go. 1987 to 1999, or 1990, sorry. And they're identical clocks that when they're ex um, put on exhibit, they are started the exact same time. And over the duration of the exhibit, they just kind of slowly go out of sync, which I think is a, a really kind of insanely simple way of um, representing uh, how impossible it is to be completely in sync with somebody. Um, anyway, I like this work. I like him a lot. Um, and I think it's complicated in just the right way for us to um, learn from.